I want to take a few minutes of your time, walk you through the process of getting the show out to you. There are literally thousands of drawings in a lot of different forms and a lot of different divisions that have to get done to give you a 22-minute episode. So I'd like to go through some of these areas very quickly. image that you see in front of you is the size comparison chart. This is actually the funnest image because the thousands of drawings that we end up getting to, we get to finally compile all of them and put them out here. And what this says, here are some of the characters. Here's the size relationship to each other. And you get a sense of a real world that everybody isn't the exact same body dimension and size and weight and everything else. Even Al Simmons and Spawn aren't the same size because as we saw in episode one, they were two different bodies. So they don't even have to actually match in terms of their height and their weight. But you're gonna see a cross section of all of these guys. Now, how do we get there? Well, let's go and look at a couple of the other steps. You're gonna see some of the action poses here. The show is called Spawn. So let's start with Spawn himself. We're getting crouches, movement, you know, jumps. The artwork on this one was done by a gentleman named Greg Capullo who did close to 80 issues of the Spawn comic book for me and continues to work for me to this day, who I think is the most brilliant artist I've run into. He was able to show how the body of Spawn looks in a lot of different poses. And even though we have all these drawings, we still weren't able to convey with the magnitude and the power that we got into these, but it becomes a process that has each time you go on, you're able to get a little bit better. So not only do we do this for a character like Spawn, we're gonna have to do this for every character, no matter how benign they may be and how boring they may be to the viewer. You're serious? Always. The next thing is creating the heads of all of our characters. There are a couple things that are important about the heads of any of them. And if you want one to convey emotion, so you're gonna see that we do dozens and dozens of drawings to actually get people's mouths moving and their eyes and their eyebrows and these glances and these looks to convey happiness and anger, melancholy. You know, e even if they're eating food, what does it look like when they've got a mouthful of stuff? Oh, shit. God damn it. And once we get all of those looks so we can get them to say something with the look without having to do any actual dialogue at that point, We then go to our very next step, which is how do we get dialogue in? Here are the mouth charts. Although it looks like we're just making silly faces, you're gonna see below each one of the faces a letter. And we have to actually give the studios that are gonna be moving the lips a chart that says this is what their mouth looks like when they say the letter S. This is when it looks like when they say the letters TH. Or if they do a B. <laughs> Now let's get into some of the broader details of what will bring the entire world together. Here's an example of a detail. I mean, obviously Spawn to me was at best when it was just sort of a head and these two eyes and this cool crimson cloak sort of willowing into the night wind with a lot of shadows around it. But. That just doesn't come willy-nilly. We had to literally draw images of what the cape would look like in about 200 poses. So that when, we, again, once we send it overseas to the group over there that's gonna draw these cell by cell, they would know literally how to pose a cape. And the posing of a cape is no different than, as you saw earlier, the posing of a body, that they must get it right. Otherwise, there's too much interpretation that goes into it. And the cape can look big one time, small another time. And it was by the third season, we were able to actually get a nice fluid motion for the cape that I thought was the best that we ended up getting on the show. You're nothing like me. You can't know what I feel. Once you've got the characters, you have to get now into more detail. And let's take a look at what that entails. Here, what you're looking at is a page that is entitled Various Kinds of Cups. It may seem sort of mundane, very boring, and why do we care about it? 
And the answer is everything that you see must be designed. It just doesn't magically appear on the screen. So as much as we have to design the characters and their faces and their poses and their looks, if that character is sitting at a desk with a phone, with a cup of coffee and files and pencils, all of those pieces must be designed. And these tedious things, even bullets and casings, and all of that is designed so at the end of the day, you have literally a truckload of drawings in which you hope that you don't deviate from what it is that you're trying to accomplish too far. <gasps> now we're gonna go into some of the, the funner aspects of it, which is creating the environment and the background. All the steps that we talked about actually have different layers to them. You create a face, you put then the look on them, you then put some shadows on it, then you put a color over it, and we start walking through each one of them. Well, backgrounds are no different. First of all, you have to sort of go, well, where does this take place? In this case, what we're looking at here is a city street with the background. And once we get all the detail of what we want this sort of gritty town to look like with as much detail that we sort of all agree upon, we then go to the next level, which is now taking this and laying black shadows on it. To me, compelling backgrounds are the ones that have 50% of it is sort of deep black because I think it's that moment when the sun's about to set and it just sort of gives you the world we're about to enter. It's now nighttime and this is when Spawn comes out to play and this is sort of where I want to absorb you and get you to turn off the lights as you're watching our show. And so this is the beginning of it. We go line drawing, black shadows on top of it, and then on top of that, we come in with the color palette and we finally get the true environment. We now get into the storyboards. The storyboards come about near the end, although it actually drives everything that you see. Once we've designed the characters, we've designed the desk, we've designed the cups, we've designed the cityscape, we've gotten all of the color palettes down, we've gotten all of the voices recorded, we now have to put this script that has been written in a format that will basically make it seem like it's an ongoing story. So what you'll see here is a storyboard. There are literally, in the course of a 22-minute show, anywhere between 300 to 500 pages. We then come in and add the black, so we tell them where the shadows are gonna go. And sometimes we actually even come in there and do a color layer so that they know where to lay the color on top of all of this. And so we'll then take all of that composite, take the lip flap, which is the movement of the mouth as we've recorded it, and eventually all of that becomes what ends up being the direction to draw cell by cell by cell. 24 cells equal one second. One second times 24, you need 60 of those. 60 of those become one minute. One minute times 23 becomes a show. So start getting your calculator out and doing the math of how many drawings have to get done just on the overseas to get there. And that's not counting literally the hundreds of thousands of drawings and minute detail that we sent over to get any kind of show up and running. So hopefully you'll get an appreciation of all the work and why it takes sometimes literally years for any kind of show or movie to get off the ground. I want my human.